Wow, are you guys in for a treat today? I have been laying low, lying low for a few days, and I am going to do what is known as Robin's Rant. Now, I'm a boomer and have been, you know, in education for a very long time. And I have discovered through my work, I've been a business owner for 36 years, just how much education doesn't get you where you need to be. And I don't mean formal education. I don't mean like a $200,000 college degree or anything like that. I'm talking about taking the time to make sure that you are learning what you need to learn in order to succeed. I am still learning about doing YouTube videos. Isn't this fun? I never thought I would be on one, but darn it, I want to help. So today, as a boomer, I am going to do the apology that should be done for all of you. Um, I keep moving my, my, my uh, camera uh, because, again, I'm still learning. And I'm going to go on a rant about education. And we had the ability to ensure the success of public education. Um, we are now in our late 60s and 70s, and we had the ability to make sure public education was available to everybody and that it was solid and powerful and good. And I don't think we did that. I actually think we've sort of thrown up our hands and said, well, you're going to get what you get in public education because if you didn't save enough money to put your kids through private schools, you suck or you're not successful or you've done a bad job, which is all BS, all BS. So, you know, and so um, I think we nearly killed it by the things that we chose not to do. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my rant first. And so people, I, I know usually a rant needs an audience. And so I'm asking you to participate. And at the end, tell me what you think. Tell me what we can do to improve. But here is Robin's rant about education and a specifically public education. I'll give you a little background. I was born in 1951 and I went to... My parents tried to put me in school at the age of five to go to kindergarten. And because of certain things that had happened in my early childhood, not to be discussed here, I got hysterical. And on the steps of the uh, school that they tried to put me in, because my brother was in second grade, I threw a terrible tantrum and they took me out of there kicking and screaming. So I never went to kindergarten. Well, that caused a real problem for first grade. <laughs> I threw up every day in first grade. In fact, the janitor hated my guts because every day at 10, 15, he had to bring out the red sawdust and clean up Robin's barf. So I am really kind of, uh, I've grown a lot since then. But my mother was raised as a strict Catholic, so she did not think public education or public schools was an option for us, and she put us in a Catholic school. So I did go to Catholic school for 12 years, but all my friends, a lot of my friends, went to public school, and on my days off from Catholic school, I used to go to school with them, if you can believe it, instead of staying home. I would get up early and go to my friend's public school as a guest, so I could see what public schoolers were doing. And to be honest with you, I liked their whole thing a lot better than mine, but it had nothing to do with religion. It just had to do with the fact that my friends were at that school, <laughs> even though I'm close as can be with my friends from my own school, but... It was just different. So let me start. We, in the beginning um, in school, what you did was you took your child to school at about 8.30, maybe earlier for high school, dropped them off, and around 3 o'clock, you picked them up. And then we said, oh, public school, public school, I have to go to work early and I have to work now and I don't have anybody to take care of my children. So the public school system said, okay, parents, we're going to try and get a daycare program in place 
before and after school for you. So they opened up a little bit better. They brought in the Y to be on campus to watch the kids. So if you had to go to work early, you could drop your child off at school at seven. And then after school, they could, if you couldn't find a babysitter, which was so hard, or daycare that would take them only for two hours a day, the public school system said, okay, well, we're going to get after school care for you because we want to support you, parents, in your in your job. So we're going to have a an atmosphere where we take care of your kids. So everybody said, great. So they not everybody started dropping off their kids, but so many people dropped off their kids at 7, 730, picked them up 5, 530. Were you supposed to feel guilty about that? Hell no. But was it hard on the public school system? You bet. You bet it was. And then you said, people said, oh, do you know how many kids at school don't have breakfast and lunch or are too poor? And we said, no, we can't have kids going to school without food. That doesn't make sense. We can't do that, right? So what did we do? We said, all right, we're going to give meals at school. Now, some schools, because they were in areas that had bad weather, they had lunch programs. But then we instituted to the public school system breakfast programs. And let me tell you, when my kids were little, which were in the 70s and early 80s, there were kids that went to school that had candy in their lunchbox. And one of my children came home to me, I was PTA president, and said, Mom, do you know that he only has candy for breakfast and lunch? And I said, well, that's not okay. So I went to the principal and said, you know, I think we have some kids in this school that don't have food. And they have parents who are, you know, don't have the money uh, for food all the time or, or um, they're poor or someone's not looking out for them. And these were kids that were dropped off at school at 745 and had lollipops in their lunch box. Am I criticizing the parents? No, I was one of those kids whose mom had no money. So I got it. But I said, what are we going to do? So this particular school and then the district in general instituted a program to get breakfast and lunch in school so that kids who qualify could eat it. And then we said, qualify. So that means a parent has to come to school, tell them they're poor, tell them they're newly divorced, tell them they'd lost their job. And that was going to be too much for them. And so they said, ah, I don't know what to do. So we're just going to try and feed these kids. So now what we've done is we've said, okay, the kids need food and the kids need daycare. Go ahead, public school systems, and let's do that. So then we had teachers volunteering before school and after school, taking turns at lunch to oversee lunchtime. We brought in um, assistant people to help with meals, help with before school and after school, help with the playground so the teachers could get a break. So now we've said we need our public schools to be daycares and food providers. Then we said, do you know how many kids don't get their eyes and their hearing checked because they don't have the money to go to the doctor? So we said, I know what we'll do. We'll give the public schools some nurses and we'll arrange for the doctors to give those kids eye and ear exams. So at least they have some help. And then what we can do is we can say, oh, your child needs glasses. And then if we can, we can provide glasses for your child or a hearing aid for your child. And then we said, people aren't taking their kids to the doctor for their vaccinations. Oh, I know what we'll do. We'll have the public school system give them their vaccinations. And then we said, oh, but some people don't like vaccinations. And the public school says, what are we going to do? Are we going to allow parents who don't believe in vaccinations not to get their kids vaccinations? Are we going to put a strict rule that says if you're putting your child in school, they have to have these, these vaccinations by kindergarten or first grade if you chose not to put your kid in kindergarten? Or And then we have to make sure they get their boosters. So now we're daycare providers, public school, daycare providers, food and meal providers, doctor uh, checkup providers and vaccination providers. And, and we said, oh, just put it on the public school system. Let me tell you, if your child was in a private school, the parents would be paying for all these services or the, the private school would just say, would you go take your child to the doctor? But no, the majority of children go to public school. So of course, 
The school system wants the healthiest, happiest child possible sitting in the desk, right? Then we said, what are we going to do? Some children are being abused at home and we need to be able to get them help. Well, I was abused at home all the time and I was in a Catholic school and one teacher tried to help me in seventh grade and my mom came down on them so hard that nobody ever tried to intervene with the abuse I was taking at all. But we now have said to the public schools, you have to turn parents in. If you find that a child's being abused, you have to listen to the child. You have to take them in privately. You have to get them interviewed and find out if this child's being abused. Really? So now public school teachers are now officers of the state where they have to look for child abuse because what do we want when our child goes to school? We want them to be loved. We want them to be uh, fed. We want them to be clothed. We want them to have their medicine, their vaccinations. We want them to be able to learn. So we said, okay, if they're in an abusive family, then we need to help them out again, right? Oh, we said that and we did it. So now teachers are doing that. And then what else did we do? We said, I'm not sure, but I think par uh, teachers need to have guns to protect kids from shooters on campus. So now we're saying to our teachers, you need to be law enforcement. So let's recap on Robin's rant. We asked them for shelter before and after school. We asked them for meals for breakfast and lunch. We asked them for ear, eyes, nose, and throat appointments so that we could tell if the children were healthy. We asked them to provide vaccinations so that they would get their shots so that they would not get measles or mumps or chicken pox or whatever. We said, oh my goodness, we need to look for abuse. And so all the kids, we need to watch out for the signs for abuse. And then we said, oh, and teachers, besides all of this, you need to lay your life down for these kids. Oh, gee, you guys, did we ask public schools to do too much? And then we underpay them and we rip them to shreds. And you know what? This may be the end of my points on my rant, but you will never see me more passionate about anything than the education that brings you to a place where you can take care of your money and feel successful. And I don't mean feel successful because you make $250,000 a year or more, because that's fabulous. But anywhere that you make whatever you make per hour and whatever you bring to the table with your best self is successful. And we're not showing children that because we're too busy doing all these other things, right? I mean, come on, I bet you none of you have thought about this. So one more time, public schools, way back when, you dropped your child off and you picked them up. Then you could drop them off early and pick them up later. Then your child could get meals at school. Then your child could get examinations at school, health examinations. Then your child could get vaccinations at school or through the school or for free where the county helps. Then we said, oh, what about child abuse? And we said, okay, look out for that too. And then we said, please be a human shield if an active shooter comes on campus. And if you don't protect my child, I'm going to blame you. That's what we've done to public schools, my friends. And that is why it is failing in this country. And that is why we need more help. And by more help, I mean positive steps to make this better. And part of what I'm going to be doing until I take my last breath on the universe as a human being on the planet is I'm going to create some programs for preschoolers to second grade, third grade to eighth grade, high schoolers, college kids, 
um, junior college kids, community college kids, people who don't want to go to school, people who just want to learn. We are going to do that, but I can't do that without letting you know how I feel. So I've gone on my rant. I've probably enlightened a lot of you that didn't realize that all this has been shoved at private education. And I hear so many people criticizing it and I'm so sick of it. So public school teachers everywhere, private school teachers everywhere, uh, college professors everywhere. I applaud you and I say thank you for doing such a damn good job with what you've been given. And in this time of COVID, oh my goodness, these teachers are rock stars and we need to appreciate them. So while this is um, has a few remarks about the pandemic, what's, what I'm saying holds true for all time. We do not cherish our public school system. And in fact, we have people who rant against it. And I'm saying I'm not putting up with that anymore. So here are some solutions because I'm a solution driven businesswoman, a mom, a wife, a grandmother, and a friend, and I am solution driven. So here's some solutions. Okay. The number one solution is participate. You have to participate and stop acting, asking, stop acting like the public schools have to provide everything for your child on everything I just ranted about. You have to participate. And if you go back to one of my videos about time management, you will be able to participate in your child's education more if you manage your time better. And let me tell you, time is money and time is education. They are all together. They are intrinsically connected and you cannot divide them up and, and start to pretend like your time and your child's education are not hand in hand because they go hand in hand. If you can't give time to it, they can't give time to it. The number two is investigate the curriculum that your child is learning and get involved. And if you feel there's an area that you don't understand, learn it, Google it, video it, figure it out. Your participation in your child's early education, middle education and late education will more solidify their success as an adult. And isn't that everybody's goal is to be a successful adult? I'm sorry, it doesn't matter if you're married and no children. How successful are you with your time management and how much time did you take to learn new things? Everybody needs to learn. There's night school, community college, YouTube videos, Google. There is a way to learn all the time. Um, you can do it and you need to encourage your child to do that. So if they're going through the public school system, they're getting the best damn education they can get. And it, I'm not talking about their grades. I'm talking about their participation, their participation and their level of enthusiasm for what they're doing. So ultimately, you have to participate and investigate what they're learning. You can't just drop them off and say, well, whatever they did for those six hours or eight hours, I don't know. I'm so busy. I can't do anything else. It's just not true. Um, and I'm going to break away for a minute and tell you why. My mother, and when there's kudos I can give her, I give her those. She died 10 years ago at the age of 90, and she was a stickler for education. And we were the kind of kids that were doing math problems at the table at night after dinner that she was checking. She was checking our handwriting. She was checking our reading. And she worked 10 hours a day. But she said, I need to make sure you're literate and happy when you go out into the world. And this is my responsibility. Now, am I putting my mother out there as the best mother ever? Hell no but I'm telling you that she did do that. And I have friends who have commended her for it and said, I wish my mother had done that because I would know more. Okay. So you have to participate, investigate the curriculum, and you have to now bond with the educators for your child's early education. You have to bond with them, whether that is uh, informally or formally. You have to know that you're on board with what they're doing, that you will criticize if you feel something's going wrong, but that you support their, their direction and you want to help. Your child needs to know that they cannot divide you and the educator. Now, I've had some bad educators in my life, and so did my children. 
And I spoke up respectfully to the principal, brought it to their attention and said, what can we do together to fix this? I was a working mom once my youngest was four and I, they went through the rest of their school with me as a working mom. And I know what it feels like to get up at 6 a.m. and go to bed at midnight and not know which end is up. So I'm not talking, you know, about something that I have no knowledge of. I have lived all of this. And I'm telling you, you need to participate, investigate. You have to, and then you have to bond. You have to make sure that teacher understands that you are a parent that gets involved. Now, even if it's only for an hour a week, and I can hear some of you saying, I don't have an hour a week, but you do. If you go back to my video on time management and you go back to how important this is for your child to become a successful adult, you will find that hour a week to help your child and their teacher make it a better educational experience. The next thing is organize. Now, I could probably have this in an order that might be a word, but I didn't. And so maybe I'll come up with a word later. Organize. Organize your time so that there is time for your child and their and your family. Man, woman, children, parents, grandparents, get some organization into your life so that you can participate on some level in your child's education. Now, I mean it. It a lot of people are highly involved with their children's education from kindergarten till about third grade. And then as a child develops and their friends become more popular than you, and you go, oh, it's your friends again. Um, you end up not getting involved as much in school. You're not getting as many hugs from your kids. You're kind of bribing them to do things and you're in that, that um, horrible cycle. But you need to you need to try harder at those stages when something's difficult, you need to give it more energy, not walk away. And this is really important because what you teach your children now is their money success, their life success, their human success later in life. And I'm going to build on this throughout a bunch of YouTube videos. So I'm not blowing smoke out of an orifice. I am truly, truly engaged in this conversation. And the last thing is don't be intimidated. You know, one of the problems with school is it's very competitive, even from a very young age. So there's one little kid that's really good in sports and a couple of kids that get straight A's and some kids have more money than others. And so you walk into that school already intimidated as if you're not good enough. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're good enough. You are good enough, no matter what your economic level, no matter if, no matter what kind of clothes you wear, if you, I, I personally mostly shop at Ross. Okay. I do have some shirts that were more expensive, but I've had them for five years. I am not a, a, a crazy spender. I believe in doing smart things. Walk onto that school campus proud. Ask for the help you need. Give the uh, support you can. Don't get intimidated by this. No, that is something that I don't like what's going on in this country where we intimidate people, um, making them think that they're not good enough, that they haven't earned enough money, that they're not smart enough. BS, yes, you are. But it starts from within. And so if you're, it starts in school, just like money triggers start in childhood, this feeling of, of not being good enough starts in early education and goes forward from there, follows you through grade school, middle school, high school, college, and into your adult life. When you're sitting there as a 32-year-old at a bar, not speaking up because everybody around you sounds like they're doing better than you. Sound familiar? It happens from childhood on. Your child is sitting in a classroom going, you know, I don't think I'm as smart as they are, or we have an old car, or my clothes aren't as pretty, or I, I, you know, my teeth are crooked and we can't get braces. And then we build on that insecurity until we're an adult and we are hiding our mouth and we are cringing in a corner. We're not asking for a raise. We're not going out there to build a business. All of those things start early. So um, my book about childhood triggers, which um, I encourage you to read because it's all part of what happens when you get um, 
older, childhood triggers about money, childhood triggers about your worth. They go hand in hand with your childhood triggers about money to equal a mess when you're an adult. So if you want to send your kids out on a great path, if you're an adult that realizes when you go back to your education that you were intimidated and overlooked all the way up or didn't feel good enough, join me because from now on, these are the things I'm going to address. How to start a new business, what to look for as an employee, how to get through college on a budget, how to teach your kids in high school about a, a checking account, managing their money, how to introduce children to money, how to introduce children to loving education, no matter what form it is in. During this, this time, your child, there are you, they can watch a video on how the pyramids were built. That's education. They can watch um, a, a Google documentary on um, how roadways were make, made or how the trains came into existence or who built airplanes. Those things are all education too, not just math, English, geography, history, which are things that I love, but they're not the whole picture of education. So you get a 4.0 when you graduate from high school. Do you know how to balance a checkbook? Do you know what bills are? Do you know what deposits mean? Do you know the difference between leasing a car and buying a car? Do you know about leasing, renting, uh, buying a house? Do you know about sa savings accounts? Do you know about credit reports that you're ruining when you're in college? I can't tell you how many millions of kids get out of college with a screwed up credit report before they ever have a chance to live their life. I guess I sound ranty, don't I? Okay. So I gave you five steps to take. Participate, investigate, bond, organize. Do not be intimidated. Intimidation is not okay with me. So what is the moral of the story from this video? And I know I'm I'm moving around a little bit, but when I get passionate, I do so. And you're just going to have to get used to it because wait till I go into uh, the abuses that of other areas of our life. I am telling you the support we need to give to our communities is real. So when I my when I'm doing all these apologies, I'm also going to do rants and we're going to have educational tools for you to use. And we're going to get on board with this. If we have another year to go in this particular uh, state we're in right now, I am going to work with you so that we can succeed. And on the other side, we are going to come out with enthusiasm and positivity and a successful idea a successful thought in our heads because it starts with one feeling. Am I a success? Am I not? And the truth is you are. Don't go by what other people tell you. Go by what you know. You get up, you work hard, you take care of your family, you take care of your friends, you're a good partner, you're a good business person, you are a success. You're going to hear me say that all the time. So don't be, don't be annoyed. I'm on your side. Okay, so the moral of the story is whatever education you've chosen for yourself, it's out there. So there's formal education, not so formal education. There is so much available. There are online encyclopedias. There are online dictionaries. There's online math classes. There are tutorials for everything. Go out there and get it. Go out there and use it. Make a goal to learn one thing a month. Something that you feel like you do well, that you want to do better at, or something um, for which you think you do terribly and you need to improve. Either one. So if you're good at something, you want to be better. Or if you're kind of crappy at something and you want to do well, there are so many tools available to you. Instead of falling asleep on the couch after a hard day and eating a bag of cookies or a pint of ice cream, pick something to learn. So at the end of my rant, here is what I'm going to say. Competition is part of what makes capitalism work. But competition can also be very detrimental if you do not have the correct headspace.
So when you're sitting with someone who went to Harvard and you went to your local community college and then got a bachelor's degree somewhere else, or you went to a trade school out of high school, or you have a high school education and took lots of classes um, in, in night school, you are a success. That Harvard graduate, let me tell you, it's hard to get into Harvard, but you could do it. If you could get in and you could pay for it, you would ace it too. So don't sit around anywhere hanging your head and saying that you aren't smart enough or your education wasn't good enough or you don't have a degree in such and such and because it's, it's just not true that you're not good enough. I have classes. I do not have a formal degree, but I have been taught by the best CPAs around. I have taken Saturdays and paid people to tutor me. I have gone to night school. I have taken some college courses, all in the subjects I was that I was interested in, of course, in order to further my career. I started a business in 1984. That was 36 years ago. And I have made it through all these years, no bankruptcies. I've been through all the ups and downs of the economy. And I hold my head up high against anybody because I have had so many people say, I don't know what you know, Robin, and I have a master's in business. So let me tell you, it's what you're willing to learn, the, the uh, extent to which you are willing to go to learn it. And it's out there everywhere, night school, community college, online courses, um, tutorials for your children in school, tutors, all kinds of ways to get an education, to be successful as a human, to be successful as a uh, wage earner, to, to love your business, to love your life. I am telling you, stop putting these limits on yourself and listen to my rant, get over the intimidation. And I know it's hard to do. So I am going to walk over to my cabinet And I'm going to suggest that you buy this book. It's called The Common Sense Guidebook to Mastering Your Money. And it talks about the triggers from your early childhood. It talks about time management. It talks about the intimidation and co competition by others that makes you shrink in your seat and say, I'm not worthy. I talk about that in the book. It's a real easy read. There's a, a couple of quizzes to see how good you are with money and way in ways you could be better. Um, and, and I'm saying it because you know what, it's not very much money on Amazon. And you can also let um, producer Joe know in comments that you would like a copy and you'd have to give your information. But I'm saying to you that it's really important that I'm able to help you from now on. And I am there for you. I am not backing down. And um, I'm a believer. I believe in the goodness of people. And I believe in parents who want their children to have the best and feel like they can't give it to them. Honestly, I have lived that life. I understand. So thank you so much. I'd love you to subscribe um, and like, give a comment, tell me what I could do better. I know I move around a lot. I am. Um, I was in drama club in high school. I was drama club president, and I was also in chorus. And um, my my passions are singing and dancing, but also giving back. And I will continue to do so. And I need your help. So, thank you from Robin's rants from the Boomer Apology. And please subscribe and like. And I will be doing these more and more as time goes on. And I appreciate so much you listening to me. Thank you and good day.